What's up guys, it's your boys Wilkie back out with another Chris Watts video. And yes, we are going to continue. No, I am not upset or obsessed. <laughs> well, I am upset, but I'm not obsessed because apparently people think I'm obsessed with this case. I'm obsessed with getting justice for uh, Shanann, Bella, and Cece, and baby Nico. I want nothing other than Nicole Kessinger to be written, or I would say written, to be interrogated, to be questioned, and to be tried like she should have. Um, with that being said, we're going to be taking a look at some more evidence of her involvement. Because when Tammy, the, one of the lead interrogators that was with Chris Watts, was mentioning who did this to the girls. And he mentioned, which I've been told, which I, I completely spaced. He's like, I can't do that to them. Who's them? There's other things that definitely are uh, really weird of uh, blurred mouths during interrogations, um, different things. It just, it doesn't make sense um, when it comes to the interrogations and interviews. So with that being said, what I want you guys to do if, before we go any further is grab a chair and get ready for some more of Bombshell Evidence. We're going to be watching this uh, YouTube channel called Unjustified. Uh, this was sent to me by a viewer, subscriber. Um, and with that being said, I'd like to take a look at it. So... What I would like you guys to do before we get started is subscribe to the YouTube channel. Join the 40,000 subscribers that are here today, which I thank you guys so very much. We're rearing the end of, or we, not rearing the end. We just got done hitting 39,000. We're into 40. We're going to 50. And when we get to 50, one of you lucky people are going to get one of those MetaQuest 3 virtual reality headsets. And I can't wait to get one of those and give to you guys I just love giving uh, the enjoyment and seeing your guys' um, uh, comments that you guys enjoy the content. And then I just want to see somebody's light or face light up when they win this meta quest. So all you got to do is subscribe, comment, like, and share. Make sure you guys go over to this channel called Unjustified. Give them the love for the, the, the work that they did um, for taking a look at all this stuff. Um, and with that being said, let's get a video. So there is going to be choppy spots where we're going to cut here and cut there and so forth like that because they do talk and so forth like that. We don't want to talk. We want to like narrow it down to the, the, the key points. So let's listen to them talk to Chris, but listen to how he responds by them, they. Like, why would you say they or them when you're just talking about yourself? Um, and why is he like trying to protect somebody? Letting Chris know up front, we already know. And he's telling him, we know about Nikki. We've got all the tags. So it's really not going to do you any good to lie to us. So that, that's they knew. where he's going with this step, I believe. Um, based on the people that I've talked to and Tammy's talked to, based on all the investigation you've done, based on your cell phone, both your cell phones, your wife's cell phone, Nikki's cell phone, okay, based on talking with family members and friends and based on talking with everyone. Here's what we know. You know that we have texts and we know that there's an Alexa in your house mm -hmm. and you know that those are trained to record distress. Okay. You know that we know the content of Nikki's text messages and your text messages and Shanann's text messages. Okay. I know you were what was that one? In your house, and you know that those are trained to record distress. Okay. You know that we know the content of Nikki's text messages and your text messages. Seeking the truth with Dave allowed to lie. And Shanann's text messages. Okay. I don't know you wish Nikki was until right now. So. Okay. The next step is done in a non-threatening manner. Theme development is where the investigator will offer an explanation as to why the suspect committed the crime by making some sort of moral excuse or justification that the suspect is responsive. That's the reason that happened. I believe that she's a controlling person. Maybe doesn't listen to you as much as she should. I think that she can do whatever she wants. 
I think if you were to go to a restaurant, she would order whatever the hell she wants. And as soon as you order a nice steak, she'd say, well, buddy, we're on the path to leave the marriage. Okay. It's ironic that we're talking about you and Nikki. And pretty much if you guys didn't know that she played the good cop and then he played the bad cop kind of thing, the, the good cop, bad cop. But they did, like, great. They did fantastic. Like, she's like, just come clean. Just let us know. He's like, quit the BS. What's going on? Like, they tag team. Where were they when Nicole was investigated? That's what I'd like to know. I think that she was the one who started on the task. And she is the type of person that's controlling, doesn't listen, does what she wants. Is walking away from her kids. She wasn't controlling. She was just a very independent woman that knew what she wanted. It's, here you are defending her. Because to your core, you want to take care of the people you love. Okay. Chris, did she name you something to them? No, I don't know. I'm serious. I have no clue. So you would have known because she didn't leave the house. Did she name you something to them and then did you feel like you had to do something to she named? The, they were at the house when I left. They were there. They weren't there. They didn't leave. They vanished. Stopping denials is a key step in the interrogation process. This is because allowing the suspect to verbally deny their guilt will only help to increase their confidence and resilience to questioning. Interrupting all attempts at denial helps to keep the suspect's confidence low and generate feelings of powerlessness. How much I get, I get. I believe him. It's not an option right now. I know you were being accepted, so that's not even an issue right now. Chris, I'm going to stop. I'll stop for a minute. Take a deep breath. Well, I know you want to tell us. I can I can see it in your face. Holding this lie in is going to do nothing for you. I, I know. Before. I'm not like trying to like cover things up. Like it's, yeah, but you kind of are because and and no, it's normal. Normal people would do that. Normal people that make a mistake and you are going to go. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't do anything. That's normal. This is where this is where the rubber meets the road, Chris. Like, don't let this continue any longer, please. Okay. I'm not trying to make anything continue. Like, I want them back home, like. But you know they're not coming back home. You know that. I don't know them back in my head. I'm, I hope they come back home. But you know they're not. Uh, I hope they come back home. Yes. An objection is different to a denial in that it can give the investigator information that can I be used against they come back the home. suspect. And if handled correctly, the investigator can make the objection look more like an admission of guilt. For example, I would be like, I want them back now. Where are they? But no, he knew exactly. A suspect may make an objection such as, my sister was sexually abused as a child and I saw how much it hurt her. I could never rape someone. I would never do that. An investigator using the read technique may respond by saying, that's good. You're saying that you wouldn't ever plan to do that. It was out of your control. I know you care about women like your sister. It was just a mistake. Yeah, that's what happened. I didn't do anything to her. Was it an accident? I didn't do anything. Was it an accident? There was, there was no accident. I don't know if there was an accident in the house. I wasn't there for it. It's a big deal if it's an accident because we can work with that, Chris. No. Yeah, there's no way to do it. There's no, I did not cause an accident. I didn't do anything to my wife and kids. Was it a misunderstanding? There's no misunderstanding. Like, we had a talk. There was no sense thing where I, I didn't tell her about the affair. Okay. I didn't. That, that was a misunderstanding. Like, sure. Mr. Green came down, misunderstanding that. Good. By this point in the interrogation, the suspect should be feeling frustrated and unsure of themselves. Investigators will capitalize on this by appearing to be the suspect's ally and friend. 
This is achieved by using first names, getting physically closer, and offering gestures of concern, like patting a suspect on the back or touching their Cammy shoulder, does. which makes it more difficult for them to detach from the situation. Okay. I mean, I give Tammy props because I could not do this knowing that he took the girls and uh, Shannon away. I would be, you know what I would want to do. But Tammy held her composure, did a fantastic job. Again, I keep saying this as well. Why wasn't there a girl and boy with Nicole? Like, I understand what you, you want to make sure that you tried. Like, if I, I believe that Tammy could have brought everything out through Nicole. I think she would have been able to rip apart her stories and see it through the, the lies and the BS. And now we got this other guy that did it and pretty much laughed and befriended pretty much uh, Nicole. But again, I'm not an educated criminal justice person I, i've never gone to criminal justice again i'm not saying i'm a professional but you can see by people's mannerisms the way that they talk and present themselves and how they lie people that lie to you don't look at you they look to the left they i mean you can't just i mean there's common sense to some of this stuff when you can tell that somebody's giving you complete bs crap and you can see it through chris you can see it in nicole you can see it in some of uh, Chris's family members. I'm not even going to get into that one. We're, we're going to talk about that later. But it's just completely horse poop that you're going to sit there and justify that Chris didn't kill these his family, that Nicole was not involved. Again, we can't physically state how she was involved, but there is some way in my heart and in my soul, I have some, like, I don't know what it is. I have some feeling that she was involved. I can't say what it is. I've I've dreamt it. I've thought it. I don't know what is like it is. I'm 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 feeling different things nowadays. I don't know what it is. <laughs> don't for those people say it's puberty. Don't even. But I just I have an urge and a feeling, and I've when I've had this urge and feeling before, it's come true. When I've I've predicted, I'm not saying I predicted, but when I had a bad feeling about my ex-wife, I just knew she was doing something. She was. My ex-fiance back in college. I had a feeling. Guess what? It was true. I don't know what it is. I have this, it's not ESPN, or not ESPN, yeah, ESP, of this feeling that she was involved in some shape or form but I don't know what it is and I can't, and I'm, that's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show with all this evidence, including these other YouTubers to justify the evidence to prove that she was there. And we do have the evidence, but nobody's looking at it. They're just like, Nicole wasn't involved. Get it over it. You junior detectives. I'm not going to do it. Case closed. It's not case closed. So let's continue. And he confesses with to his dad. The suspect will most likely be feeling a sense of defeat due to their inability to successfully deflect and deny the investigator's He's a accusations. Sucky liar. Their body language will often reveal this: hunched shoulders, head in their hands, and elbows on their knees. If the suspect becomes emotional or cries at this point, it is important for them to feel supported and comforted by the investigator, as this is often a sign of remorse or guilt. Saying something like, I know how much you've tried to keep this inside, but I'm glad to see those tears because they tell me you're sorry this thing ever happened. You are sorry you did this, aren't you? <laughs> Like, 
The alternative question is probably the most important stage. The investigator will present the suspect with two potential but equally incriminating motives for them committing the crime. One will be more socially acceptable, such as, it was a crime of passion, wasn't it? No. Whereas the other will be much more undesirable and widely viewed as inexcusable, such as, you killed them for the money, right? Kind of thing, sir, I told you about. You think she had trouble breathing that night? Apparently, around this mark, between 30 and 33, which we got three minutes to go, we're going to start hearing him start to say them and they. So just listen. I know it's hard, but just listen. If you got earbuds or earphone or ear headsets, it will help. Did you know the homicide that happened in Aurora where the guy beat that family to death with a ball peen hammer? Mm -hmm. Only person that survived was a three year old sibling. And that sibling grew up to be a total mess. No family, no mom and dad, no brother or sister. She just by herself. She says, I wish I could have died with them. And there are times that people freak out. I've seen it. I mean, I've been in Mom for, so, for almost 20 years. I've seen it. Parents freak out and they're like, oh my God, like, I can't have my baby girls live without each other. They're best friends. They're like twins. They're, you know, they wake each other up in the morning. And I understand that. We have mom in Castle Rock that suffocated both her baby girls. She's like, I just, my husband was going to take them. And she's like, I just couldn't. Just Notice how she uses a case where one of the kids were suffocated. You see what I'm saying? But there's more. I mean, that's just one of them. But yeah. And I thought I was doing right by them. I thought I was saving them pain. And I get it. Why? Why is she saving them pain? She didn't want them to have to live without their mom. The phrasing of the alternative question is important and ideally would require the suspect to merely nod their head or say yes, as this makes it easier for them to admit their guilt. The investigator must develop any admissions of guilt that followed from the previous stage into a legally binding confession. This is done by using open-ended questions and avoiding any realistic or highly emotional terminology. Often, other investigators will be brought into the interrogation room to witness the confession with the aim of increasing the suspect's stress levels and willingness to confess. I'm just going to pack this up um, and then uh, the FBI guy, Graham, okay. that you've been talking to. She literally also tells him that he's a great liar because she could see the needles going off, which was kind of funny. I'm putting over in chat, okay? Sure. Is that cool? Yeah. You need anything? Crackers, water, Mountain Dew? I totally will give you Mountain Dew. No, I'm good. I mean, if, if, if you're not being truthful about who took their lives, like, that's on them, too. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to do that to them. I'm not doing that, so. Did you hear that? Do it to them. Let me back it up. Listen close. This is about if you're not the one that took their lives. You don't really want to throw them under the bus, do you? And he says, no. And then he almost gets really defensive. And he says, I'm not doing that to them. Who's them? Them, too. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to do that to them. I'm not doing that to them. I'm just saying. I'm no, 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 I'm not doing that to them. He slept. Okay, 
Once satisfied that they have obtained a sufficient confession, the investigator will have the suspect write it out so it can be used later as evidence. At this point, the suspect is often willing to do anything to escape the interrogation. Now that all of the stages have been explained, it is much easier to identify them being used. Regardless of what technique investigators use to interrogate a suspect, getting a confession is a highly complicated process that requires not only creativity and confidence, also psychological expertise. No it's two left. interrogations are alike, and a confession is not always guaranteed. For example, in the US, it is estimated that between 42 and 55% of suspects will confess during an interrogation. Really? The fact that the most hardened criminals, as well as those who are innocent, can end up confessing demonstrates the knowledge and manipulation tactics that interrogate <coughs> confess. Whether or not these tactics are worth using, despite the possibility of false confessions, continues to be wide. So this part, there's, they're pretty much saying, she makes it very, like, clear. Listen to this. About her bombshell information. There was no bombshell no, information. I, that is his words. Okay, now you tell me this. What in the hell was the bombshell information? <coughs> Was it his macros? Was it the weight he lost? Was it the uh, condoms? Um, let's see, what else did she tell us? Um, the dates they went on? Um, does all that sound like bombshell? Helping Nothing. to crack the case? Nothing what Nicole said helped authorities get Chris Watts to confess or be arrested. Nicole Kessinger's if she never came forward, they would have they wouldn't have needed it. She came forward to better her name. And for them to sit there and say authorities with a bombshell information during the investigation of the missing pregnant What bombshell? I mean, if anybody can think of anything that she said that was a bombshell that helped crack that case so quickly. Please enlighten me in the comments over there because I've been trying like hell to figure it out. And I, I think, agree I, with think her. I did. But if if there's anything in the discovery or her interviews that you guys heard, please enlighten me. Nothing. This is apparently something that we need to take a look at. It should be noted that approximately three hours before the polygraph was scheduled to begin, which was 8 a.m., remember the polygraph was scheduled for 11. At 8 a.m., I received a phone call from Anna Darko, and I know all of you already know this. Tony Husky advised Chris's computer, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, it's talking about the emails, right? So at 8 a.m., right here is when it said they found out about Nicole, right? 8 a.m. Before Nicole even came in. For whatever reason, she doesn't want to. Nicole was supposed to be at work, but that wasn't at work because somebody from Anna Dargo had notified her that they were there getting the emails. Mm -hmm. That's when she came exactly. forward. She's freaking okay, out. Now let's look at this. Okay, this is Nicole's phone logs. I'm sure you're here. Yeah, we've definitely seen them before. This. Let's look at the 15th. Can you see that okay, Dave? Or do I need to? I'm so this is pretty funny too. I've looked at her actual transcript or her phone logs. And there are some t channels on Instagram that are like, or not Instagram, but TikTok that are trying to justify Nicole not being in Frederick, Colorado the morning of the murder because she was driving to work. If you look at the 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, whatever, vice versa, or even before then, like the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, the 13th, her phone never pings in Frederick, Colorado. 
ever. Only time was the morning of the murders. I've looked at the days. If I have to make a video on just that, I will. The the 10th or the 9th, the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, the 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th I looked into. Never, ever, ever did it say Frederick, Colorado, unless it was the morning of the murder. And you want to tell me that when she was driving to work, that's why it pinged? Why isn't the other days pinged? Somebody's like, well, it's because she never had a phone call when she was going to work. I'm telling you, you are on your phone. There are people on their phones when they're driving when they're not supposed to. They're calling their friends. They're calling their mom. They're calling their dad. Their, their boyfriends. Their girlfriends. Good morning. Love you, sweetie. They're doing that. Nobody is driving to work and not on their phone. I guarantee it. But again, she's never pinged in Frederick, Colorado only the morning of the murders because she screwed up and didn't realize it. And that's why she was trying to delete messages, delete files, delete all everything that she's trying to get because of this. I'm on another screen. Even with one eye open, I can't see it. You can't? Not on my phone. Maybe you can on a, a, a computer, but not on my phone. No, sorry. Let's do this. Now can you see it? Oh, that's better, yeah. Okay. All right, let's look at the 15th. Okay. We're starting at 5.51 a.m., Thornton. 6.10, Thornton. Okay, but let's go after 8 a.m. Let's start there, okay? Because that's when Anadarko sent them. But let's start after 8 a.m. Okay. So this is August the interrogation. 9.49 a.m. <coughs> now look at this number. 720-382-5700. Try to memorize it. So we have that number at 949. 952. And again at 1138. 1138. Okay. All three times. Three right in a row, same place. All the right. only time that day. Now. So, did you put that number down? <laughs> because there's where that number goes to. Frederick Police Department. Okay. 382 5700. And she wasn't there until what they say. <coughs> I think it was like afternoon sometime frame. So three times right in a right in a row, okay? She calls Frederick Police Department. All the way up until 1138, which was her last call with them. Shortly thereafter, we're seeing drones. We're seeing drones fly over Serbia. Mm -hmm. We're seeing um, what they were going to use as the raid technique, right? But there's even more than that to it. Let me show you what I mean. This is like a whole other Pando's box. I got to talk to Kim and Dave. I got to see what they know more. Okay. So here we are back before, before he takes the polygraph. Okay. Listen closely. Look at the time here. Two okay. o'clock. Uh, that's why I have an arrow there. He Roughly has not two. confessed yet. He has not even taken the polygraph. However, Nicole's already talked with him. We know at least three times on the phone. I personally believe, as well as Dave, that not only did she talk with them on the phone three times that morning, I believe, and Dave believes, theoretically, okay, this is not something that we have so we cannot confirm this. 
but we believe that she met with the FBI off record, okay, At, uh, before 5.30 that evening on record. We believe she gave them information. Now, we're going to get to our theory in just a moment. Oh, our theory my gosh. Is, it's, uh, it's, we're just going to, I'm going to just put it out there, but... Now listen to this. Can you hear that okay? It was Dave? pretty choppy, yes. Okay, all right. I mean, you would. Like you had someone's disappearance by murdering them. Do yes. you agree with that? Yes. So, what different physical ways could you cause someone's disappearance through murder? You could stab someone, stab right? someone, shoot someone, hit them with a blunt object. Um, what else is there? I mean, I use a weapon with like gun or a knife. I mean, okay. You could he beats around the bush on this one. Did you get that? He was sitting there trying to think of something else to say, and coincidentally, coincidentally, she's like, you could smother someone. She goes on to say strangle someone. So... Is that a coincidence or just a damn good guess there, Tammy? And he, he goes. Curious. Did you strangle someone? Hang someone. Yeah, you can. All that kind of things. I mean, it's hard to even think about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. so you could strangle someone. You could drown someone. Yeah. You could shock someone to death. Um, you could burn someone alive. Um, what other ways you Mm -hmm. so i wanted to get into this too as well there's text messages that we haven't seen from chris but there's a lot of the text messages that he would say that he said they would freak out and so forth like that or it was them that was at the site um it just doesn't make sense like he's literally saying they them uh i can't i can't say because they'll be mad or who? And they didn't investigate it. It's like, who are you talking? Like, I wasn't just there. or I, I was there that morning with them. And he's like, I, I was there digging the hole with them. I mean, I was digging the hole. He says it. Like, I've heard it how many different times? He said he, he had help. He was there that morning with somebody helping him dig the hole. Like, what more can you get? So we're going to leave this for a part one, part two. If you guys want me to continue with uh, Unjustified, is it Unjustified? Yeah, I would def I'm going to definitely contact these two, see if we can talk some stuff together about this, um, just more in depth. But again, like I said before, I've looked at Nicole's transcripts and never ever does it say Frederick, Colorado, besides the morning of the murder. You can't tell me it's because she was going to work. She never clocked in. And then they tell me that I'm losing my marbles. I've looked at it, her stuff. I'm telling you, Nicole was involved in some shape or form. And you cannot tell me otherwise. I'm still waiting for somebody that believes Nicole to tell me why that she's innocent. And nobody has told me why. So that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this reaction and some more evidence of looking into Nicole's involvement. Nicole being there. Chris pretty much accidentally saying they, them, as people. This is before we started having uh, differences in pronouns and stuff like that. We didn't have the pronoun justification back in 2018. Now, it would make sense. Now, if they were saying they, them, and stuff like that, nowadays, it'd be a little bit more confusing. But back then... Do you get where I'm coming from? Um, just comment your guys' thoughts down below. Please be positive. 
please be kind. No bullying each other. Uh, I want this to be an honest area for us to debate, for us to bring theories and opinions, um, not to be disrespectful. We want to find the justice um, with uh, getting Nicole, you know. Um, so again, just let me know in the comments. Hit the like button for the justice that we will hopefully one day see. And we will see you guys in the next video. So please take care. Be safe. And as always, keep nerding on, and we'll see you guys next time.